Hello, this is Katarina Flore, founder of Fit for the Top. Thank you for joining me on this personal development journey. I'm looking for excellence, for greatness in people. And it is my intention to find ordinary people that do extraordinary things. And the lady I have invited to join me in the interview today, it's no exception to this. She's uh, the top criminal judge in the Netherlands. She's also a mother of three beautiful uh, women in their 20s already now. She's an artist, she's an avid reader, she's an erudite person. Um, she loves traveling. There are so many, many interesting thing about, things about her that we want to discover and share with you. And share with you some of her strategies that makes her, that make her successful and happy. In her life and how she has dealt with transitions so far. Sineke is well in her 50s which actually in her case is the new 30s because she looks amazing and she exuberates health and wealth in the same time. She's a very interesting person and uh, an erudite person. She has studied many disciplines and you will hear during the uh, conversation with her but in the same time is a person that you can have a lot of fun with. She doesn't take herself too seriously. And according to external uh, rules, uh, society rules, she's a very successful woman. But what I'm more interested in is how she perceives her success and what is her definition of, of success. So what is your definition of success and how successful do you think you are? Um, that's a, that's a unexpected question because I never ask myself am I successful I never think in terms of success but I do think in terms do I do what what I want to do and do I do it good because um, uh, my parents told me when you do something you have to do it good and you have to do your best so that's what I try to do and uh, I think that's my term of success last year uh, you were involved in the most prominent criminal uh, case in pedophilia mm -hmm. and was uh, all over the, the press and you were the only woman in the case, mm -hmm. right? And how, how was it for you? Because you are also a mother mm -hmm. and uh, you are involved in this case. How did you work with your internal resources to make sure that you take the right decision for what was there? Well, I was doing that case together with two very experienced colleagues, of course. And uh, I was doing that case as a professional. As a professional judge with a lot of experience. So, uh, all the experience I had as a judge in other cases helps to um, be involved in the case, but also to keep a professional distance. And that makes that what you see and what you hear uh, and what you have to decide on, you can uh, look at with a professional distance. And so you dissociate basically. Yes, that's what, what happens. And that's because I had a lot of training uh, in the past. So that's, that's your professional role. And of course I'm a mother, but uh, my children were already grown when this case uh, was tried, so that helped. I, maybe uh, I wouldn't have done the case when my children were still uh, would have been very young. Maybe that's too difficult to separate the two worlds. But now, uh, for me, it wasn't uh, a real problem. How important is intuition in um, your decision-making process? Well, it's. That's interesting, uh, this question. Uh, for me it is very, very important. Um, maybe as I said before, um, I'm working as a judge, so that's a very rational job. And you have to make rational decisions. Uh, on the other hand, for the decision as I make in life, uh, I trust my intuition, really, because um, when I make decisions uh, uh, on my intuition, um, then you do the right things. 
And of course it's important that you uh, wonder, do I do the right thing? But then you really have to think about what makes me happy, what feels good at this moment. And uh, what helps is, uh, is, is um, eating properly and uh, doing sports to, get le to let go of stress and to uh, be able to uh, reach your, your, your inner emotions. Many women, they put their attention only on the children mm -hmm. and when the children leave, somehow the purpose in, in life is somehow gone and they, they experience uh, lots of emptiness. Yes. How do you avoid this and how do you discover other things in life? Well, I remember when I was uh, in my 20s, uh, I had a relationship uh, with a boy for a couple of years and um, I was so focused on him that when this relationship ended I was totally lost and then I thought okay I don't want this to happen ever again I want to be able to uh, to be happy with myself to do my own things and not be dependent on uh, a man or uh, whatever and then I decided I always want to be able to earn my own money, to have my own life, to have interesting work and um, um, so that always kept me going and I also uh, felt that when uh, we had our children uh, being at home is great but it's even better to have a family but have a job at the same time. It makes me a better mother and it also makes me a better person at my work. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I feel because uh, you're able to um, not take yourself too seriously either at home or uh, at, at work. And then you are a successful judge and then you come home to your family, mm -hmm. right? So you have another hat. Yes. So how do you switch off the judge mode? Uh, because I can imagine being a judge is different than being a, a mother and being a partner to your husband and all these roles that you play and bringing the feminine part of you even mm -hmm. more to the surface. Mm -hmm. So how do you switch uh, roles? Um, well, I think that's not so difficult um, because um, of course there are different roles but I'm, I'm, I have a job, but I'm also a wife, I'm also a mother, so there are several parts inside of me um, and, and it's still me. And it helps to that um, my children sort of think, okay, she's our mother, okay, she's a judge, so what? And so sometimes when I come home, I'm sort of full of myself and uh, I did a good job and then they, they don't listen. The sort of, uh, okay, mom, well, uh, let's eat, okay? <laughs> Ground you back to basics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Of course. And, um, and I have a, a very, very wonderful husband. I have wonderful children, but a wonderful husband as well. So uh, when I come home, um, he's there, my kids are there, and then it's very easy to let go of my work. So that's, uh, that helps. Your husband is also very successful. Mm -hmm. You are very successful. And you also have three children together. And uh, in time, how did the, the relationship evolve? Because um, one of the things that happens, uh, you see women, some of the women become successful, mm -hmm. but they are also unconsciously, or some of them consciously, afraid not to become more successful mm -hmm. than the husband, so they, they keep themselves small. And how, how did it work for you? Or did you get space from your husband to really blossom uh, with everything you can? Or how, how did it go? My husband is very important for me. Uh, because he gives me, as I always tell him, he gives me uh, very strong wings. Uh, so I'm able to fly. 
because um, he tells me every day that he loves me, that, that he thinks I'm the so most beautiful person in the world. So, husbands, uh, men, please remember this, okay? <laughs> yeah. And um, so that makes me very confident, and it uh, makes me feel like okay, I'm okay as I, who I am, as I am. So that really helps to um, conquer the world, so to speak. And um, so you, have, you feel safe. With you feel, I feel. I feel very safe. Sinike, you have many interests. I know that you love architecture, music. You read a lot. You travel a lot, and you love art. That's right. Yes. So, what's art for you in your life? Uh, art makes me happy. That's basically it. Uh, when I uh, look at paintings, uh, then I really enjoy the, the, the beauty. And uh, when I, I, I love beautiful things in the house, outside, in nature. And it makes me uh, feel happy and in balance. That's, that's basically it. Reading your bio, I've noticed that uh, besides the fact that you are an erudite woman, uh, with your interest in uh, developing yourself and reading and art and all that, you've studied a lot. Mm -hmm. So you have a master in sociology, then you studied law and working in parallel as a stewardess, mm -hmm. flight attendant. Then you have your children and working. You had many things on your plate in life. How did you deal with this? Well, first, I think you need a lot of energy. How did you get your energy? And, uh, well, that's something you have, but you, you have to uh, maintain that. By in, in, well, you have to eat properly, you have to take, you have to take rest uh, at certain times. Uh, sports helps. Uh, I do a lot of running and it clears my head. Okay. So you have to be fit. Um, you have to um, work, you have to sort of um, work hard, you know, when you don't feel so fit in the morning and you think, okay, not, not today, well, that doesn't help. You have to go, you have to go, you have to go on. Uh, but also uh, set your priorities. So at some times in my life, I had a busy job and there was a lot of going on at home and then at some times I, th I told myself okay you have to be patient as well mm. you have to enjoy what you have at this moment and the next step in your career will come but not at this time because the kids are small I want to be as I want to spend time with them and uh, you can't do everything at the same time and um, don't uh, feel yourself pushed. I mean, you, um, your career will go like this, but sometimes, sometimes you have to step Plateau. Yeah. down a little, take your time, enjoy a certain period in life, and then, okay, you can go on again. But don't feel yourself too pushed to go on and on, because then you, it, it won't make you happy, I think. How do you deal with adversities in life when something doesn't go according to the plan? Um, How's your mindset in those moments? Um, well, that's that's the good question. Um, my first reaction to problems uh, was always, okay, I'm, I will fight this. But when you grow older, uh, you realize that you can't fight all the time and you can't fight everything. So sometimes you have to accept that things don't always go the way you want them to go and, uh, and let go. And um, that's life. That's life. And you do your best and um, that's all you can do. Are you still learning to let go? Uh, well, I think you have to learn your whole life to let go yes so it's not that you know oh when i'm gonna be 50 all the problems are gone it's no, not no. like this it's not working like this you it's not working like that coping mechanisms and yes 
Um, you, I think you're learning your whole life. And learning your whole life. Learning your whole life. And um, the different parts in your life have, have different uh, problems. So now I'm growing older and maybe in a couple of years uh, I'll get problems with my health. I'm, I don't know, but then I'll see what to do. Sineke, you are also the head of training department and I know that uh, one of your interests in it is preparing and uh, guiding, mentoring the next generation of judges um, to develop themselves. Um, why is that? Why are you uh, involved in this also? Uh, well, I think that has to do with uh, passion uh, because I'm very passionate about my work. I think being a judge is a wonderful job and I'm so enthusiastic about this that for me it's very fulfilling to give this passion to the younger genera generation so, uh, and to help them grow into this job. And um, so what I like about working with the younger generation is one, uh, sh uh, share my passion for the for the job, and two, it's always it's also interesting to see uh, how they think about being a judge, and how they um, function as a job as a, as a judge, and um, so talking to them about what they think and what they want to do, um, yeah, it's always very very interesting. It keeps yourself young, I think. Every four years or so you, you change uh, positions and of course you advance uh, on, on the ladder and so you were in transition mm -hmm. but as a leader you are not the only one in transition. People under you and your peers were also, your boss was also in transition and the idea is always when we are in transition to reach the break-even point as fast as possible so we can start really giving net value in the new mm -hmm. position and this is very interesting how you balance various uh, concepts like you know learning versus doing offensive or pushing versus um, defensive mm -hmm. what's your take on this in order to have successful transitions well you have to realize that um, nothing stays the same so life is always evolving, is always going on and so you have to realize that and life is, 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 is um, it's about dualities because at one side you have to go and uh, with full energy and have goals but on the other side you have to take your rest and uh, feel your intuition so that looks uh, like a conflict, like a conflict, like a conflict, but it's not a conflict. Mm. But you have to search for the balance. Another example, for instance, um, on the one hand, you feel comfortable in a certain position, but on the other hand, you know that if you want to go further, you have to get out of your comfort zone. And uh, that's difficult because you feel really comfortable at a certain yes. position, but you know you have to get out of it in order to go on. Yes. So, for instance, when I was um, uh, studying sociology, I decided I have to go abroad and do some research in England because I was studying the working of uh, the, the medical sector. And in England they had the National Health Service, so I wanted to know how the National Health Service was um, doing compared to our health system. In the Netherlands. Yeah. In the Netherlands. So I went for um, a couple of months to Bristol 
And I had several contacts there, uh, uh, directors of hospitals, uh, doctors, etc., etc. And I was a student and I was so nervous, but I knew I had to do it. So I remember one time um, a doctor, a specialist asked me, he said, well, you're, we are so jealous of your midwife system. Tell us about it. And I thought, midwife, what on earth is a midwife? And I didn't know, but you know, talking and talking, then I realized, okay, I know what he's talking about and I had some answers. But, you know, on the one hand I was very scared, but on the other hand I had to do it because I wanted to do this research. So sometimes you have to push yourself. Through the fear. Through the fear. And what is beyond the fear? Beyond the fear is that you realize, oh, there are a lot of things I can do. Mm. And uh, I learn uh, again and uh, that makes you happy. And to finalize our talk, I was wondering um, of the following. When you think about your career, career journey so far, and your ethical standards, have you ever felt that you had to uh, make a trade-off or to uh, compromise on your ethical standards, principles, in order to climb the ladder? And how, if yes, how did you handle this? Uh, I think, for me, that's a difficult question because I can't remember that I was ever in a situation that I didn't know what to do or that I felt that I had to do something that I didn't want to do. Um, so, um, well, as we talked before, um, I always in my career chose a path that felt good for me. And I never wondered what is good for my career. I never wondered, okay, when I go on this path, then probably in the end I will reach this point or I will uh, be in contact with this person. I never thought in terms of uh, what's useful or handy for me to reach a certain goal. I just thought, what, what do I want and what do I like? And then I try to do that. And so then you don't put yourself in the situation that you do things against your feeling, against your will. I think it's as easy as that. Well, thank you. You're a fountain of uh, wisdom and inspiration and fun to be with. It's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very thank much. You.